Alright folks, so I just want to do a video where I talk about some new batteries that I picked up and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run a capacity test on these and see if they live up to their claims which uh, I think are quite extraordinary um, pretty surprised about what they're claiming so anyhow we're going to get into that but uh, before we do that this is going to probably take a while capacity tests always do so let me get a nice sip of my Miller Lite and then we'll go ahead and get started Oh, that's good. All right. So that being said, these are some batteries that I picked up off of Amazon and I had them delivered for eight dollars and eighty-eight cents for two lithium-ion. Uh, they are RCR one two three, which means rechargeable um, one two three size batteries, and uh, their designation is sixteen three forty, which is sixteen millimeters across, thirty-four millimeters tall. They claim to be uh, 3.7 volts, and they're Lion, uh, Lion batteries or lithium-ion batteries, which I totally believe. I don't have any problem with that. Um, they are making a claim, which I think is pretty bold, that these are, t I don't know if you're just going to come in on there. We'll get a, sh we'll get a, once I open them up, we'll get a better shot, that they're 2,000 um, mAh, which is extraordinarily high, especially considering the price point of these batteries. Um, some other batteries that I use that are RCR123s, like this Olight is 650 milliamps per hour. So when you start talking about 2,000, that's supposedly three times the battery for about a third of the price. Now, I don't always equate quality with price, but um, I'm having a hard time believing that with these particular batteries. Um, also, some other, another, just another quick example is this Nikkor um, RCR123, and this is 650 milliamps per hour. You can see that right there. So I just have a hard time believing that these batteries are doing 2,000. Um, it kind of reminds me of some ultrafires, which are some batteries that I've done some tests on, expose them for not not uh, being able to perform to their claims. One of the giveaways, let's go ahead and let's open these up. One of the giveaways for me with these batteries, one is, is how they're shipped. Um, you know, it's pretty crappy packaging. see if we can get a little bit of a close-up on those. Let me uh, see if I can adjust the camera. So you can see the 2,000 milliamps per hour right there. And then if you look here, they say TCR. Now typically, these types of batteries are um, designated ICR, IMR, or IFR. Um, and the I is actually a misnomer. It's actually supposedly a lowercase l for lithium ion. So, so an ICR would be a lithium cobalt uh, rechargeable battery, or an IMR would be a lithium manganese rechargeable battery. There is no such thing as a TCR. At least I'm not aware. And I'm not an expert, so maybe there really is. But I've never seen one, and I've tested a lot of batteries at this point. So I think it's a typo or a mistake um, that's coming out of a Chinese factory. Now, <clears throat> if you Google TCR uh, lithium-ion batteries, you'll get like Tang's Fire, Ultra Fire, basically the brands that are notorious for being faked or counterfeits or having smaller batteries shoved inside of them along with some sand or other inert material um, as a counterfeit battery. And I've done a video on uh, counterfeit uh, Ultra Fires. So anyhow, let's see if we get this baby open. I'm uh, going to test this on my Fox Novo digital charger, the 4S. I'm a little bit concerned um, <laughs> that I'm going to have a fire burn my house down. I'm not going to record the entire test, but uh, we'll record getting it started, and then we'll come back. I'm going to charge these. I'm going to drain them and then recharge them at a half a milliamp uh, for the first test. Um, and if they are truly 2,000 milliamp batteries, that should take about four hours. Um, they're not. I'm sure they're not. So we'll see what happens. They do claim <clears throat> to have circuit protection in them, which is a good thing. When I look at the bottom of these batteries, I'm not so, I'm not entirely convinced. One way to, to take a look at this is to compare them to a primary. So this is an unprotected battery. And then when I take a look at this, they're the exact same size. And that leads me to believe that there is no circuit protection in this battery. Now, if I compare it to, I don't know if you can see that, if I compare it to the Nikkor, the Nikkor is just a little bit taller. 
and that little bit taller tells me that there's circuit protection built in there. But uh, who knows? Maybe there's some under the wrapper, and uh, I can't see it. Maybe it's ultra thin or ultra slim or something like that. Anyhow, let's go ahead and let's get these babies plugged into to the charger. Let's see if we can see what's going on here. So right out of the box, they're at 4.2, which is pretty high. So these probably aren't going to charge very high. So the way that this works is, is that it tops the batteries off, and that's what I mean by they're not going to charge very high. They'll top off, they're probably pretty full, and then what this device does is it drains them all the way down and fills them back up. Uh, when it drains them all the way down, that's considered a dead battery, and then however much it is from topped off to drained down is considered the actual capacity of the battery. So uh, let's go ahead and let this run, and I will be back later when it's done. And then uh, we'll probably run a second test at one milliamp per hour and a third test again at uh, half a milliamp per hour. Thanks, everybody. All right, folks, the first uh, test is completed. Let's take a look and see where we are. So they both charged up to 4.21 volts, which is good. But the first one is 397 milliamps. And the second one is 396 milliamps. So they're consistent between the two batteries. But remember, these are supposed to be a 2,000, so that is uh, extremely, extremely low. It's about a sixth of where it should be. So uh, let's go ahead, just reboot this thing, and uh, let's do a capacity test of one full amp and see what happens. So you can see that we're set right there. All right, folks, be back in a little bit. Thank you. All right, folks. The one milliamp per hour test is done. Let's see if we can get this in here. Um, one charge to 4.21, which is good. The other one charged to 4.22 volts, which is good. But uh, 405 milliamps and 399. Again, that's really, really low for something that's rated at, uh, at 2,000. So if these were a little bit higher, <clears throat> like say around 800 or 900, I don't think I'd really complain about it uh, because that would be on par with some of the other uh, batteries, the other 16 uh, 340 batteries that I've had or I've used. But I'm just really not sure that these can be trusted and I'm a little concerned about what the contents or what the makeup of these batteries are. So we're going to do one more test. Again, we're going to drop it down to a half amp and then uh, we'll see what happens. Alright folks, and this video is probably going to be a little bit longer than I wanted. Uh, so if you watch the whole thing, thank you. This is the results of test number three, which is our second test at half an amp. So let's go ahead and take a look. And if you look, uh, again, charged up to 4.21 volts on both batteries, but uh, we are 396 milliamps in uh, battery number one and 388 in battery number two. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that these things failed. They did not lead, live up to their expectations, uh, less than 25% um, of what they claim, somewhere more around the, uh, this less than 20%, I think. I had to break up my calculator and take a look at it. But anyhow, I'm going to say these are fail. Do not buy them. Uh, and I'm sorry that they are here sitting on the desk. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it.